Another postseason journey begins with us being able to say that we have the talent, but will we be able to get the job done? That is the question, as per usual, here in Ottawa. 48 wins in the regular season. We make it to the playoffs. We take on Tampa. They have home ice advantage for whatever that's worth or for whatever it is not worth. And overall, I again can't help but think that we're going to fall short, but maybe, just maybe, much like, say, with Alex Ovechkin's Washington Capitals, once you start to lose hope, that's when a team can finally push themselves over the limit and get things done. I don't want to sit here and have this be about what is going to happen if we lose. However, as I punch my desk there, obviously, Ovi's 39. There's no guarantees he'd be back. It was kind of a fluke we ended up with him in the first place. What's going to happen with the Kachucks? Maybe even Taylor Hall if we lose. You know, Tyler Johnson, Crosby, these are guys who are just kind of stopgaps. Malkin as well, who we didn't exactly plan on having on this team. It just kind of happened that way out of necessity for us needing to hit the cap floor because we wanted to run with so many younger players. So it's an interesting spot to be in. Of course, Thomas Shabbat has a spotlight on him too, someone who was supposed to be a staple of this defense alongside Eric Brandstrom at the very least. And obviously, defensively, things haven't planned out, uh, or pa- panned out, I should say, exactly as planned. You know, we end up getting rid of Lassie Thompson, who was supposed to be a part of the Big Four, and, you know, alongside Shabbat, Bernard Docker, and Brandstrom. Bottom line is, uh, this has you know, con- uh, continued to be a constantly evolving process as I continue to struggle for words, but hey, you know what? Sometimes that happens. Speaking of things not going according to plan, Darcy Kemper is still the starter, Which, you know, I don't know what the future of Wallstead is here, to be honest. You know, as to someone who's going to be commanding a relatively big contract at the end of next season, you know, we should make it to that point in this series uh, quite easily, actually. But, again, just what is this team going to do? And then we look at Xavier Borgo, and, uh, yeah, I can't help but think we should send him down. He's not going to be too happy being a healthy scratch, but you know what? We're going to do what we have to do. Let's take a look at what this Tampa team looks like, shall we? Shall we, shall we, shall we? Because obviously I got a feeling it's going to be a little bit of a difficult task. This Atlantic division uh, was ridiculous, as per usual. So this is the team that we're going up against. Andre Palat, Braden Point, and Nikita Kucherov on the top line. Kucherov at a 93. Obviously, the stats don't matter. That carries over from last year. Second line, 35-year-old Steven Stamkos with Mikhail Granlund up to an 88. And Maxim Kashkovich, I believe it is. Let me know if I'm wrong there. I'd probably still call him the wrong name anyway. Up to an 85. Third line, Yanni Gord, Anthony Sorelli, and Taylor Reddish. Oh, God. And a fourth line of David Cotton, Yakov Trenin, and Philip Schlappick, Schlappick, Schlappick. That's, that's unfortunate. He's going to... Uh, He's going to give us a problem or two or several. Defensively, Victor Hedman next to Cal Foot. The second pairing of Luke Hughes and Mikhail Sergachev. Third pair, Dennis Gilbert and Tyler Myers. Making just a shade under two million. The goaltender, as expected, is Andre Vasilevsky, now 30 years old. Good God. And Garen Bjorklund is the backup. Mackenzie Weger, hurt. So another former Sen, of course. They have a couple of good, healthy scratches. <sighs> it's an uphill battle. But this is the type of team that you have to beat if you're going to prove that you are actually legitimate cup contenders. I mean, we have the offensive edge, somehow. We have the edge in every category, for God's sakes. I don't know how, but we do. Will we put that to use? Will we be able to get it done? That is the question. Let's find out. Again, Darcy Kemper between the pipes for us here. Let's see how she goes. First period of game one, goal apiece of Genny Malkin and Andre Palat. Second period, Tampa adds another one with Kucherov on the power play. We go to the third here. In desperate need of a goal. Power play is a good time to do it. Taylor Hall. Gets the goal. Malkin, his second of the game. We're now up 3-2. to two. A good little turnaround there. Still a long way to go in this game, though. Halfway through the third period. 
Seven and a half to go. Can we hold on? They've hit 30 shots. It's been a little bit since they've registered a shot, though. Great team defense, and Evgeny Malkin gets the hat trick on the empty netter. 4-2 final in game one, and a damn good way to start off uh, this series for us here. Brady Kachuk as well, an assist on every single goal. Excuse me. What are you going to do? Brady Kachuk with an assist on every single goal. I don't think you could have asked for a much better start to this series, all things considered. You know, Brady's not exactly the one that we're looking at as potentially moving on from. Obviously, Matthew Kachuk's a little bit more of a problem player. We'll see what he's able to do. Of course, he woke up in the playoffs before. Now, auto rotates off, so we should still have Kemper between the pipes. We jump into game two. No reason to debate changing over the lines. Let's see what happens. First period, not a bad start. Tyler Myers scores a minute and ten seconds into it, but Shane Pinto and Nico Heischer with goals to get us back into it. The top line contributing in this one. We're up 2-1. to one. Second period. Goal apiece. Andre Palat ties it. And Nasland gives us the lead on the man advantage. So we head to the third here. We just hit the 20-shot uh, marker here as Victor Hedman is able to tie this one up again. We've just been unable to get the insurance goal. Power play for Tampa. An extended power play at that. We survive somehow. Five minutes to go. Doesn't really have the feeling like we're going to win this one. Overtime. Overtime at three apiece. So again, you know, we we get one goal. They tie it. We get one goal. They tie it. We could just never get that second goal. That insurance mar you know, marker. That insurance tally that we needed. Trading power play chances here. And there it is. Brady Kachuk. What a start to this series. 4-3 final in overtime. The Sens take both games on the road and are up 2 to nothing. Not too shabby. Ugh. All right, Ludwig Naslin goes down to injury. He will be out for about a week. The good thing is Xavier can slot in now. He'll be on the fourth line, maybe. <sighs> Matthew Kachuk, what are you doing to me? What are you doing what makes sense from a chemistry perspective? Maybe we don't even play Xavier here. Maybe we play Rudolph Balsers if he's a better fit. Yeah, Rudy's going to slot in there. I'm going to send Xavier down to the AHL. He'll get, at least get some play time. He deserves to be in this lineup. And uh, there's a very good chance, of course, he gets called back up. He's not going to be happy about that, though. And that might have ended up uh, really being a mistake. But you look at some of the talent down here in the AHL. Good Lord. Flaherty up to an 82. You still have Rensfeld and Pilar, who started the season at the NHL level. We'll just go with the best overall players for the job. We'll see what happens from there. Of course, as I presume, Belleville's about to head to the postseason. Yes, top team in the North Division. Good stuff. So with that, we change our focus back. And it is Game 3 on home ice. Brady Kachuk, five points in two games. If he can keep up that pace... Were even more difficult to beat. Game three, first period, scoreless. Interesting. Second period, also scoreless. 19 shots to 13, a defensive battle here. We go to the third. Brady frickin' Kachuk. Oh my god, they tied it up like immediately. <laughs> Under a minute later, David Cotton. And David Cotton again. Oh god, don't let this be the home team. Doesn't win. Doesn't win? Doesn't win trend. There we go. Easy for me to say. Power play chance goes to waste. Under five minutes left. And Evgeny Malkin ties it. Are we going to overtime for the second straight game? Yes, we are. At two goals apiece. Book ended by Kachuk and Malkin's goals. We go to OT. Let's see how it goes, shall we? Who's going to win this one? Will we take a commanding 3 to nothing series lead? On the lightning, yes, we will, and who else could it have possibly been? Matthew Kachuk. 3-2 is your final. The Sens, one went away from dispatching one hell of a team and moving on to the second round. The Kachuks stepping up in a big-time way, and that's why we didn't get rid of Matthew Kachuk, because for some reason... He is a cheat code in the playoffs. 
at least so far for us. We jump in the game four. Again, no reason for any lineup changes. Let's see how it goes. First period, good start. Rudolph Balsers with the goal. Good choice to put him in on the fourth line, I suppose. We're up one nothing. Second period, they tie it. Taylor Radish. He gets the goal that sees us tied. Heading into the third, Shane Pinto scores. Not too bad there. 45 seconds into the period on the power play, no less. We're up 2-1. 12 minutes away from sweeping the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's right. I put that, that sentence into the universe. Brady Kachuk on the power play. I said we had the talent. It's just whether or not we'd live up to our full potential. If this Sens team plays like that, it's going to be a very, very special year here in Ottawa. A sweep of the Lightning in round one. Looks like it'll be Detroit in the next round of all teams. But what a start. What a start to this postseason run. Unbelievable from Brady Kachuk, Evgeny Malkin, and Taylor Hall. That is a cheat code of a second line. Absolute cheat code. Top line, I mean, Ovi, only two points, but pretty happy there with Nico. Balls has two points in two games. <laughs> That's insanity. And then you look. I mean, nothing from Crosby, Johnson, or uh, Math or uh, Batherson at this point. I almost said Michael Matheson because he's, you know, a topic of discussion today. Whether or not he's actually getting traded to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Defensively, no major point contributors. That top pairing struggles a little bit five on five, but no reason to panic just yet. Certainly no reason to panic when Darcy Kemper plays like that in the postseason. You know, he's 34 years old. But we are now legitimately having to debate whether or not Kemper is our guy for the rest of this series. Perhaps he should be. A 9-17, a 9-34 through 16 games last year, now a 9-31. If Darcy Kemper keeps performing at this high of a level, we're guaranteed one more season. Unless we win the Cup this year, the argument could be like, okay, just end it on a high note, and we might. That way we'll just focus on one and done. But if this series continues beyond this season, which is the plan, I think Darcy Kemper has to be the guy. It's tough to say. And of course, I don't necessarily like to, you know, just trade every pick and top prospect and go all out in the last year. I always like to play it as if I were to continue it because you never know if I will. We'll see what happens. At the end of the day, we pick up four wins out of four. We're moving on to round two. Whether or not it's Detroit or the New York Rangers next. Maybe, just maybe, we're now playing with a little bit of confidence.